Yo, what is up, coders? Uh, today we are going to be answering a Amazon coding interview question. Uh, this is called First Non-Repeating Character, and this is according to Code Signal. If you want to check it out, I'll link in the description. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. Help me grow my channel. But yeah, let's get into it. This is could be asked by Amazon. This question I actually am familiar with, and I was asked this during my uh, Google screening interview for the internship position. But still, very interesting. Let's get into it. All right, so instead of reading the confusing problem descriptions, I do like to just explain this to you guys so we don't have to read and get confused. Basically, what we're gonna do is solve a function called first non-repeating character. Uh, our input is gonna be one string. So we're gonna get one string, maybe it's like this or this or this. Only characters in the string are gonna be lowercase English letters. So there's no numbers, there's no special characters. It's, you know, letter A through Z, all lowercase. Uh, it's going to be at least one character, and it could be up to like 100,000 characters. So it could be a really long string, really short, but we're not worrying about empty strings here. Now our objective is to find the first non-repeating character in the string that we're given, right? So that means that uh, a character is non-repeating if there's not if there's only one, right? So if uh, you see there's three A's, that's a repeating character. A is a repeating character. Three C's, three E's. But, uh, you know, you can see that B right here is clearly not in the string again. So that is non-repeating. D is not repeating and F is not repeating as well. We want to find the first of these. So let's just go through this example, uh, or all these examples for that matter. Uh, so A is repeating, B is not repeating, C is repeating, D is not repeating. So we see E is repeating and F is non-repeating. So we see that we have three options here, B, D, and F. Those are all non-repeating, right? But we want the first one, right? So the first one we come across is B. So the answer is going to be B, just the character B. In our next string that we're looking at, we have uh, A, B, C. Uh, there's, so let's look at A first. A is repeating. B, B is repeating. C, C is not repeating. Neither is D, but C is, you know, the first not repeating one. So the answer here is just going to be the character C. Now, uh, depending on your interviewer, usually when you have a situation like this where there is no repeating characters or you can't solve the function, you know, sometimes you'll return negative one for an answer. In this case, we're returning characters. So in this case, we don't have any non-repeating characters. You can see A has, a, there's more than one A, there's more than one B, C is also repeating. So there's no other characters that are in here. So in that case, we're just gonna return an underscore. That's what we're gonna do to solve this problem. So we understand the objective, right? We understand we are given a string length one to 100,000 lowercase English letters, and we need to somehow, you know, whether we loop through or whatever method we're gonna choose to figure this out, uh, find the first non-repeating character, meaning that character is only in there once, uh, in the first occurrence of that, in the string we're given. And we have to return that. Otherwise, we just return that uh, underscore. So how do we do this? How do we accomplish our objective? How do we find the first non-repeating character? I always just think right off the bat when I try and solve a problem, like, oh, I have a string or I have an array. I'll, let's loop through it, right? You loop through it and check each element or each character. But I mean, A, how do I know if it's repeating? I see another A here and then how do I, do I check with the index before? I do, like, it doesn't, you need, there's no way to reference other parts of the string. Okay, A, how do I know if it's, I've seen a duplicate, you know? There's no way with just a for loop. I'm gonna need like a data structure or, I guess I could do a two pointer, like brute force, right? I always start with brute force. And I mean, if we did this, we could have, you know, our outer loop is at A and then we just loop through the rest of the string and uh, we could see, oh, there's duplicates. So maybe we, you know, go up and now we go back up duplicates. So we go up, up duplicates up. So we go up and then we get to B and then we're like, boom, boom, boom. And we don't count the comparison at the same index, right? That's this, there's only one letter. So the same index, we don't compare. Is this a B, is this a B, is this a B? Okay, so we don't see a B, another B in the string. So if you use two pointers, you could do that. But unfortunately, that solution is O of n squared, which is going to be way too slow. 
for Amazon, way too slow for any of these big tech companies. All right, so here's the implementation of our open squared solution where we, you know, most cases it's a double for loop, right? We have our outer for loop here and then we have our inner for loop. What we're doing is this is the red arrow and it's going slower and then the yellow arrow goes and looks for those duplicates. If it sees a duplicate, it will modify this Boolean value and say, hey, we saw a duplicate and then once we're finished looking with all the yellow arrows, we're gonna say, okay, did we see no duplicates? If so, then we return that character, right? And it works out perfectly because the outer loop's going in a linear fashion. So the inner loop just goes, looks for those duplicates. If there are none, then the first character that we saw that doesn't have duplicates, that's what we return. Otherwise, if we don't find any of them that don't have duplicates, then we're going to just, uh, we're just gonna return this uh, under underscore. So how can we improve this? How can we not do O of N squared? Well, let's think about this. If it's non-repeating, that means it's only in there once. And if we wanna know how many times a character is in the string, we could use a data structure that keeps track of, you know, the number of times something occurs, right? And what would be good for that? One thing that can help us keep track of the number of times a character occurs is a hash map. And a hash map is good because it has key value pairs. So the keys could be the characters and the values could be the number of times they occur. So the idea here is we have this hash map. The key is the character. The value is the number of times we see it in the string. So we're going to loop and the first character we see is an A. So we increment the count of A. Okay, so now we've seen 1a, now we go to the next day, and now the count will be 2. Next day, count is 3. Then we go on to a b, we haven't seen a b yet, let's increment the count. c, another c, another c, d, e, another e, another e, and f. All right, so that is the idea. We loop through our string only once, one linear loop, o of n, and we fill their hash map up, and we now know how many times each character occurs. But like a hash set, these hash maps aren't sorted. So we can't get the first non-repeating character by kind of just at referencing it from this hash map. There's no way to do that. You don't. There's no ordering in a hash map. So what we actually have to do is loop through again. And the lookups, luckily, in a hash map are constant time, meaning they don't require any time. So it's not extra time to look up, you know, the count of A or the count of how many times B occurs in the string. So what we can do is we can look at A as we loop through again, and we could say, how many times does A occur? Three, okay, how many times does A occur? Three, how many times does A occur? Three. And the first time we see a character in our second loop through that has a count of one, when we look this up, it's constant time, it takes no time to look this up. Hey, how many Bs are in this string? One. Then we know we found the first non-repeating character. So all together, it was a linear loop, O of N, where N is the size of the string. We had to go boom, 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 fill up the entire hash map with that one loop from beginning to end. And then there's no extra time to reference from the hash map. So we just do one extra loop below and we go boom, boom, boom up to here. Now the worst case time complexity of this solution is O of 2N and in programming, 2n is nothing. 2n isn't exponential or anything crazy. So in these coding interviews, we uh, drop the constant. So really, it's just O of n still, and that is an optimal solution. That's going to be accepted at all these big companies. O of n, o linear is what we strive for with most of these problems. So be proud that we accomplished this goal. And so here's the code for our uh, hash map version of the solution, where we have a hash map with character as the key, integer is the val, the count, the number of times the character occurs in the string. Uh, we loop through the string the first time. If it's already in the hash map, we'll increment the count of it. Uh, and if it's not, we'll just put it in there. We saw it for the first time. This is the loop where we filled up the hash map with the count of each character in the string. So the last thing we have to do is just one extra linear loop through that string. And uh, if the, the first character we find that has a count or frequency of one within that string, we just return it. If we don't find any, then yep, you get that underscore again. So the hash map in this case is probably the way to go. Um, another way you can actually create this hash map instead of like the built-in hash map data structure that's in most languages 
is you can create an integer array of size 26, where each index of the array represents the count of that character of the alphabet. So, right, this is how many A's are in the string. This is how many B's, C's, all the way down to Z. And you could access them by index. So the zeroth index, it's like the indexes of the alphabet as an array. And this is a really nice thing you can do with string problems when you're dealing with the characters of the string. It's really convenient and uh, yeah, it comes in handy. So what would happen is we would see this A and then we'd increment the value in the first index of the alphabet. Then we'd see another A and we'd increment it again and so on, right? You move through the whole string and then there's the result. It's three A's, uh, one B, three C's, one D, three E's, and one F, right? So now you can access the count of each character just by referencing the correct index in the array, right? So you loop through it once and you fill that up just like the hash map, it's basically the same thing. Then you go through it again and you loop and then you check the index of this letter in the array, which is zero. You keep going, zero, zero, it's three, until you find a character where the count of it is one, right? So we find that at B, same exact thing as the hash map thing. So here's what that would look like in code. You'd basically just have this array, you know, for every letter in the alphabet, int array with the count for count of each letter. You do that one for loop O of N where you fill it up with the count of each character. Uh, you reference the index by doing uh, ASCII subtraction. So if the current character was A, A minus A would be zero and then it would reference index zero into that array and it would increment the value by one. So all it's 26 zeros at first. And then as you go through, you do the letter minus the letter and it gets the correct map to the correct index in this array and increments the count. Then once you're done, you have all the counts of each character, the frequency of each character. You just loop through uh, one more time in the first character you find where the, uh, it, the frequency of it is one, then you just return that. Otherwise you return that underscore. This once again is just, this is linear time O of N because it loops through the whole string once. This is linear time O of N loops through the whole string once. And then we do have this space, but it's only size 26. So it's not, it's an interray of size 26, not a big deal really. And one of the very last solutions I would cover is there are sometimes built-in methods in programming languages that can find the first index of and the last index of uh, a specific character in a string. So for example, we could check if the first index of by calling this method, uh, which would give us a value of zero for A is equal to the last index of, which is not, because uh, the last index of A is zero, one, two, index two, then that would be the first, that would be, that wouldn't have any duplicates, right? The f if the first index of, uh, the first occurrence of that character is equal to the last occurrence, that means there's only one occurrence of that character, means there's no duplicate. So we can kind of go through, check this condition on each of these characters until we find one where the first occurrence, which is at index 0, 1, 2, 3, is equal to the last index of, which is also at index 3. And once we find that, we can just return that value. So in code, that would just look something like this. You're looping through that string and you're just checking at each character if the first index of it, this index of method, will look up the first index of that character is equal to the last index of it. That means there's only one of those in the string. We find one of those, you know, it's not repeating clearly and it was the first one we saw because we're checking every character as we go through. So we return it, otherwise we return the underscore. So that is it for first non-repeating character. Once again, this is an Amazon coding interview question. So hopefully you are prepared now and you understand this. And if you interview at Amazon, you can solve it. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe. I got my study guide for technical interviews on my Patreon. If you want to support me, please. Everything's in the description. Um, and yeah, we got the time complexity down to linear, which is pretty much the goal on most of these. Some of them you can't really achieve that, but a lot of problems you really want to get down to linear runtime. So we got down there. Uh, pick, there's a variety of those solutions if you want to pick from them, but of course you're going to want that linear solution. You're not going to want to choose the double for loop uh, n squared solution. So. Thank you guys for watching this video. I think, yeah, that's it, I guess. And uh, the next time we'll do another one, I guess. All right, that was a bad outro, but it's okay. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.